everybody, it's Triple Play Week, and we are so excited to have you. I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm here today with Natalie and Misty. And we have three awesome new projects to show you. So on Triple Play Week, what we do is we take something that we've actually done before and give you more ideas, because once you know the skill, it's awesome to be able to use that skill in more ways. So this block magazine came out, let's see, it was volume six, issue two in 2019. It was our celebration issue. And you can see this cute little runner on the cover. I mean, it just came out and it's, uh, it was so cute. And we realized that we'd never done an actual tutorial on it. Missy, you did a live on I it. I did, yes. And people love it because it's such a quick, easy idea. So this is the original runner that's on the cover of block. But we have come up with three new projects for Yay. you, and we hope you're going to love them. So I'm going to hang this one up, and okay. Natalie, I'm going to let you go next and introduce your project. Okay, great. So I created this cute little wall hanging. It uses one charm pack of print and one charm pack of solids. If you wanted to, you could add fabric and make it bigger. Um, should we hang this one yeah, up? Yeah, let's do it. As well? I'm going to hang this one this way, I think. Okay. 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 We got this one. Great. Let's get started. So to make these blocks. That's so cute, Natalie. It is so yeah, cute. I love it. And so what I did is I put a large one here and then a little one that joins in between the two, the other two blocks. So we, we start with these ones. And to make those, you just do the, um, the if you pinwheel guys, in the traditional. Honestly, if they've never made one of these, this is going to be a piece of cake. It's so fun. This yeah. is so They're fun. so easy. So I start by pressing my print um, squares in half. You just use five inch squares. Misty can do your pressing for That's you. That's true. what you get okay. when you're in the middle, you I'm know. I'm happy to. <laughs> all right. I need all four of them pressed. And then I also press this over at the same time. Okay. So that they're all nice and all right. square. These here? Yep, I'm gonna do a green one. Okay. And then you lay this piece right in your bottom right corner. And it's I'm, also I'm interesting. <laughs> it's also interesting to watch how these girls put theirs together because we all have different ways of sewing. And yeah. I would have laid out my four gray squares like so a four you patch. Can, you can, but what um, what I found to be super easy for me is just to do these two, uh -huh. and then the other ones I'll do identical. And then when I flip it, it's oh, yeah. opposite corners. So different brains all so think I different just... ways, and we all learn differently. And that's what's fun to me about this triple play is that we're all going to show you a different a different right. way. Right. Right. So if you lay them out like this, what you're going to do is sandwich them together. So I actually just put it together up, you know, this one's, they're like uh, fold facing and then stitch down this side. Do you want me to sew? That'd be great. All right. So this will go together really fast. We'll do this again with the second set. Now I have also seen people who stitch like an eighth of an inch. That's what I do. Uh, a lot. Oh, okay. So I'm already yep, yep. I'm already giving your secret away. Yep. <laughs> yep. Misty stitches hers down ahead of time. I've also seen people glue use a glue stick oh, to attach. Oh, that's a fun them. idea. I found that just me, laying them on top of each other like this, in, this an, in an opposite direction, okay, goes presser. together pretty easy. So here's your next one. So I actually think you should go through, just iron one more of those pieces and go through that folding one more time. Well, but they'll, they'll see it on all of ours, won't they? Yep, yep. All right, press that one. Okay, and I'm gonna cut, these are, um, these are the pieces I'm gonna use for these little white ones in between. And I'm gonna cut both of these into two and a half inch squares from my five inch square because I want to use opposite colors. I don't, I don't necessarily want them all to match. And Did you main... plan for these to be opposite? Yes. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yes. I would have been like, oh, I remember how you... good I did. No, so if you do them the same, facing upright and sideways, when you flip it, when you put the, the next one on, it will automatically be opposite. Oh, that is awesome. So you don't really have to think about it too much. You can strip piece, or not, chain piece. Yeah, chain this piece. This whole project, it's just, pretty simple when you do it that way. So now fun. some of you, one of the concerns people are going to have is they're going to say, that's a whole lot of fabric to sew through. Well, let me tell you, this, your sewing machine can go through fingers, metal rulers, <laughs> it'll go through a little fabric, so don't worry about that too much. There are things that help though, so like if, if it's really thick and it's bothering you, you can press your seams open Absolutely. and that helps a lot. It also helps a lot to make sure that your seams are going in opposite directions so that the bulk is more evenly distributed. But really, I didn't have any trouble. And you can pin or you can stitch down ahead of time. 
There we go. All right, so let's press these ones also into the exact um, same. Yep, into little triangles All and right. then flip the fold over and we'll get started laying these out because this is how this entire quilt is assembled. So while Misty is pressing the little pinwheels for the centers, which by the way is the same as the large ones, I'm gonna talk about layout. So this one is a little bit tricky because you'll see that we have intersecting pinwheels in all of these. So we're gonna put them together in rows and this row doesn't have any at the top. So we're just gonna start with these two guys down here. The next row, you're gonna have two pinwheel halves here and here and here and here. And then the bottom is the same as the top with just one side. So you really do wanna lay the whole thing out. Make sure you put your little white baby pinwheels where they go. There'll be a diagram. <laughs> yes, follow the diagram. And it is easier to put it together in rows because that's just, it just makes for easier sewing. So we'll take these top three. Help me move, move, move this you stuff can, out of the way. Sure, we can slide some things over. Can you guys see this real well? There we go. So these three will go this way and we'll put our little pinwheels here. These are the pieces. This one goes there and they don't have to be the same. They can all be different if you want. You don't have to even have same colors. You can mix and match and scrap it up. And then you can see that your next row will also get um, little pinwheel pieces on it. These we're going to lay out in rows and we're going to sew them together in rows. And then on the second row, we're going to be adding um, pinwheel pieces to both corners because this, will, this is the middle, as you'll see here. So there's ones in, in the top and bottom of both of these. And I will just keep showing these like, let's see, if I pull this to the middle, then you can get a better idea kind of of how that's going to look. And you'll want to continue putting these on all corners. So the second row gets them on both sides. Yes. Of, of the blocks before, yeah. So you yeah, wanna... so you want to lay it out ahead of time because um, some of these, like this one, has them on all four sides. This one just has, you know, these um, two. Yeah. So just okay. watch the diagram, get it all laid out ahead of time. And then when you are actually ready to sew, it's really simple. You just fold them over, fold these over, and put pins where all the little pinwheels are, and you'll have no problem. It's going to be great. This is an awesome so project. Cute, yeah. so I think cute. it turned out really cute. It's a <laughs> it lot really easier cute. than it sounds. It is really cute, and I love the look of it. It's so darling. Yep, so happy. I love the two combined, mm -hmm. and um, and I love this fabric as well. So next up, super cute. We have Misty. That's me. Misty, I haven't seen your project you yet. You haven't. No. I made this <gasps> pillow. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. It is so fun. Cute. I just thought it would be really cute to put uh, the little pinwheels in a circle. So oh my gosh, that's I set so them darling. That way. I love it, and it's really really easy. Um, here, let's put it up here. Okay. I'll Sounds just hold good. it because if, okay. you know, um, possession is nine tenths and of the I'll take law. Over pressing if okay. you I probably can right. just, uh, if okay. I hold on to it tight enough, I don't think they can take me. <laughs> so this is really cute. My pinwheels are just like the little ones that Natalie showed. I used um, five inch squares and in my fabric. I used this Uncork uh, by Whistler Studio for Wyndham. It's just got this fun um, kind of gold metallic on these rainbow colors. I thought it was really, really cute. And um, I just cut my five inch squares in fourths and then made the little pinwheels just like Natalie. So that's what my block starts out with. The difference is um, I wanted a little bit extra space on my pinwheels. So I just cut my background fabric into three inch strips and these are on uh, three inch squares for my background. Um, and I put four of those together to get my pinwheel. And then the trick for this is all in the layout. And the first piece you're going to want to sew to that is a three by five and a half inch piece. And so I just sew that onto the bottom if we want to. Okay, do again, that. you guys are going to get patterns for all of these. Yeah. And um, and so what you want to remember what what Misty just said to go over again is that she used three inch squares that she cut out of background fabric. That's right. And. But her little middle, her little middle pieces are still just a five inch square yeah, cut in half. Five, you mean press that? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, we're here for you. We are I here love for it. You. I got now, this. Now you probably don't want to use white thread no, when you're not making, with black yeah. typically. Yeah. yeah. I Although use I black. have, and here's a little tip: if, if you have, if you find that you have a like a little white thread showing, like a little sharpie marker, it'll just take take it. It'll just take that right yeah, out. Yeah, it's just gone. It shouldn't show though if your tension is good. That's right. It, it shouldn't. shouldn't. Sometimes it peaks in through. theory. Well, and my in uh, in theory, and in my stitches generally just a little bigger because I don't want to have to work hard if I have to rip. Right. And so there are eight of these um, to make the circle. Oh, the same? I well, so you start with eight and they're all exactly like this. And then on four of them for your corners, you're going to add another strip to the side and it is three by eight inches. So this one needs one of those. 
So the block is identical. Yep, it's identical. And how many of those do you make? You make eight blocks just like this one. Yeah. And then on four, you add that additional three by eight inch strip. And then it's all in the layout. I had no idea that it's, was going to be that it's easy. Super, That's awesome. super, super quick and easy. Who doesn't want this pillow on their couch? I know, I mean, isn't it seriously. so happy? It's so cute. So then you can see we have, um, these will be our corner blocks. And so we'll start by putting this one in the corner. And then this one goes here. Oh wait, hold on. This one goes here. You flip it around so that you start to get that arc. And then this one goes here. And this one looks like it goes here. So you're just gonna turn. You're just these turning blocks. The, these blocks to oh, make man. your circle. And then this. I'm so making one of these. Isn't it so fun? Yeah. And the thing I love about it is using this setting, you can put any block here, and it will just make a little circle. Right. And so the middle for our measurements is a five and a half inch square. So that's what I have right here. So that goes there. Do you there. know what? I can see this in a whole big quilt. I know. All those wreaths. Of, I know. Oh. I want to make one. And so then this guy goes here, and this one here. You guys, and look just how cool like that. It is. And then you just sew them together in rows. One, two, three. And then I just quilted it up, or I had a, actually had a good friend quilt it because I am not uh, skilled in that department. And so she did. <laughs> yeah, some, we'll talk about that. Yeah, uh, she we'll did some quilting, quilting. And then I used um, 14 by 21 inch uh, pieces to make kind of a overlap. An overlap in the back. And it was just as easy as that. No sweat. That's so awesome. cute. Isn't I that love fun? it. Pillows are super yeah, easy. I love it. And, yeah. and they are really fun. So and I fun. Think, I think people get a little intimidated by them, you know, the, you like the back. It. Yeah. You know, it's just a crossover. Exactly. And you just want to make sure you have enough fabric that it covers up whatever you put inside. All right. All y'all got to get all your stuff out of here. All now. right. <laughs> okay. We'll move these. All right. Now I got everything cleared off and I'm ready to go. And this is my project right here. So fun. So when we get um, fabric for you know, because it's three times the fabric for triple play, we actually get to choose from, there's quite a few we get to choose from, and sometimes we just get what we get and we don't throw a fit. And I love the uh, patriotic stuff. And this is, um, what is this fabric, Natalie? It's called Freedom Batiks. Freedom Batiks yeah. for Timeless Treasures. And so this is a great red, white, and blue line. And I used just about all of it to make this. And so what I did, you can see my little stars right here are on the ends. Now I do that purposefully because when you make a table runner, you never want to put your pretty block here because this is where the candle goes or the bowl of fruit goes or something goes the in the middle. Pro tip. Yes. So put your <laughs> the blocks you worked hard on, put at the ends and make your middle. And originally I thought I would do little tiny squares in the middle and, um, and there weren't enough whites to make it work and I felt like I was putting all reds together so I actually opted for leaving them whole cutting one set in half and putting in two inch and a half strips in this middle part so let me talk about these end pieces and you can hang this up here if you want sure um, these end pieces are a nine patch and so basically what I did was I took nine of my blue colors like and laid them out like this and in this pack there were several of each color so I made sure that they were different from, you know, end to end. Let me see here. Keep going. Get some more. Oh, the batiks are sometimes hard to get apart. You know, they kind of stick. They have a little bit yeah. rougher texture. Yeah, a little rougher texture. And they're probably a little hard to see on my blue mat, but oh well. All right. So then um, I have my little stars are just going to occur on these corners right here in the middles and my little stars are um, two and a half inch squares and so i'm just going to cut those out of um right here i just need a ruler i got it Ooh, oh perfect um, i'm going to cut those out of this these are two and a half inch strips actually they're they're leftover pieces from a project i was working on i know um th their kona makes a great those little two and a half packs. Cuts, yeah, they're yep. great. They're so I convenient. I love those. They're so convenient. And they're just two and a half inch squares of white and black and gray that are already cut. And since I do a lot of on the corner cutting, so I'm just going to lay my whole ruler on here and cut these into two and a half inch strips. So these are, this will go away. And then these need to be pressed into um, the little pinwheels. 
Yes, and so what so we're going to, again, what we're going to do, I want you to look at this carefully. Right. Make sure you got this. So we're going to take our square, fold it in half, just like this. And then we're going to fold it up on, on the side. On the, so, so on the short side, we're going to fold it up to the point. So it goes like this. Okay? So here's your, here's your, pin, your, your fabric in half. And then we're going to take this. And on the short side, we're going to fold it up. Now, it doesn't matter what side that you fold it up on, but you have to do it on the same side over and over. All right. So Natalie's got some for me here. And so I'm going to be able to lay these right along the edge. And you have seen us sew lots of these together. So I'm just going to lay them out here so you can see what we're doing here. Oh, that guy needs to be ironed again. He'll never lay down. <laughs> so see how that those... was your finger press one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> see how those little corners form? And basically you're going to sew it together like a, um, you know, just like a regular old nine patch. So here's this. And we'll just keep going around and we'll do two more here and that makes the end block. And so it goes together really easily, really quickly. I won't even make Missy sew it down. All right. I, mean, um, I'm here I did use me. a pin. I did use a pin. I have seen people where they put a little glue stick on here and stick this down to make sure they don't move. Missy also, just barely on the edge, she sewed a tiny little seam to uh, hold these down. These are all little tricks that will help you. Um, yeah, and I mostly did it on this side because I found this one just wanted to flip up so much. So right. if I just tacked this side down, oh, that's, yeah. then it would just make it easier when I put all my blocks together. So the side right here where, yeah. where everything comes together, she did a tiny little thing. And as long as it's smaller than that quarter of an inch, it'll get caught in the seam and exactly. you'll never see it. So sometimes those things, uh, I like to live dangerously, so always try it without <laughs> first. But if it doesn't work, go back and put a pin in there or some glue or something on there to hold it down. Yep. But they work together really cute. Now, what we want to talk about here at the very end is the quilting part of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I have actually seen these made where um, you quilt, they quilted right over the top of yep. them, and they look fine. They look like pinwheels. But part of the charm of this block is that these are dimensional. It's called a 3D pinwheel. They're dimensional and they stick up and that's part of the charm. So on all of ours, we quilted them, but we didn't quilt the pinwheels down. Now Natalie's yeah. was done, um, was yours done on a regular machine? So, no, I put mine on the long arm uh -huh. because I... And then just I cut know, out these areas. Arms, I didn't trim out. You could use the trim out feature on your long mm -hmm. arm machine if you wanted to, but I actually just freehand did stipple. My, my stipple. And what Natalie, I did is, I'm as, I got, so as I got to these, you, if you flip it back, you can see that I just pulled it back so it would go under. Oh, and cool. And then even like, let me see if I can find one. In the middle, there were places where I had to do stops and starts. Like yeah. right here, there's a little stop and I just did a, a little it, knot. Because it's never going to show. Because it's yeah. going to be behind the pinwheel. So, I love it. Oh, so I am impressed. I had mine hooked up um, to the machine and it looks like Misty... Like yeah. this is also machine done. It is. Yeah. And so they probably looks like they have some stops and starts here, some yeah, for here. their trim out feature. Show it in the top. They so did. I so love this how is this is a trim out. This yeah. one is a freehand. And then mom's see? was done just on, on a, a home machine. regular sewing machine. Yeah. Can you guys see this okay? So, so see the beautiful quilting. Now this was actually done on a long arm, right? Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then this center motif they put in, and then they did this cool corner pieces, which just, I think, really yeah. makes this. Yeah, so now, on mine, mine was done on a, on a regular sewing machine. and mm -hmm. um, Echo quilted. Echo quilted, yeah. I, I suggested that it was echo quilted. Now, this is just straight line right down here. Mm -hmm. You can yep. see these are, we did in the ditch, we did straight line quilting. But on these, I just kind of echoed the pattern around here. You I know, love that it makes as this a, little diamond in the center. Right. So yeah. And it just, you know, it just, I mean, however you want to do it, you can do it. I am not super good at machine quilting. <laughs> and so it always makes me a little terrified. And I actually had a friend do this for me. Um, her name is Janet. She works Janet here. She's did mine as well. very, She's so very talented, talented with this. Yeah. But She's because good. I was going to show it, but if I were to do it myself, I would probably do a lot of straight line and cross hatch because I'm comfortable with that. But anything curly these, or swervy these truly are going to be custom custom quilt projects yes yeah. so. but that but don't be afraid of that because like jenny said there's you so can do ways. it on your domestic machine there's so many ways to finish it well and remember yeah. it's a learned skill yeah. so you know if you do the one you do today is going to give you practice for the one you do tomorrow exactly. so it's just it's just learning how to do it and it, well and i think it also would be really cute to do it tied this is oh, a great project for oh, ties because you could put 
You could put little ties either in between the pinwheels or in the centers oh, if you just put or like a button. A, knot. a button could go in the center. Yeah. It would be really cute. There's so many, just so many fun ways to like finish this things. out. Yeah. yeah, so cute. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed this triple play from Natalie, Misty, and I on the 3D pinwheel from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.